Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers coming at you from Turpentine Creek and Wildlife Refuge near mm. Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Yeah, it's just south of Eureka Springs, and this is a true sanctuary and it primarily is there for large cats. And this just shows you the drive up. It's about a 400 time zoom. Uh, but there is lodging there and our goal is for this video to help encourage you to perhaps stay there because anything that's sold inside of that little gift shop area or from the lodging and, or the tours <laughs> goes back to help these cats. And this is, there's an amazing amount of information that these people give you. And for example, they rescued, I believe it was a cougar that had been kept in that small yes. enclosure. Okay, the Discovery Center is right behind the gift shop area. And it is a wonderful place. You can go out there, walk around, and observe the cats. Right now, it is a mask required area because these big cats are susceptible to COVID. These are some of their toys. <laughs> they play hard. <laughs> and that is one way if you can't get there to uh, visit the place, you can sponsor a toy for one of these animals. This is Bam Bam, he's odd man out here, but he was rescued early on and he has become very comfortable here and has a wonderful habitat. Speaking of information, this gives you some good information about big cats, their sizes, and uh, not only do they have, like these are about white tigers, uh, every single animal here has a placard that has their name, birth date, and a brief information about that particular animal. And Tyson Foods donates approximately 300 pounds of chicken, lamb, beef, turkey, fish to this refuge each year. I would have said meat, but you know, there <laughs> we go. <laughs> but anyway, they are a huge contributor. And so, uh, any, like we said, anything that comes in is basically given back to these animals. They have a wonderful intern program here. Uh, interns come for six month tours and can stay up to two years and they are out in this Discovery Center to help give you yes. more information uh, if you have any questions etc they will uh, kind of help fill you in and one of my questions was how do you decide which cats get to stay together because uh, you know these two are seem to be playing well together <laughs> and it's if they were brought in together, if they were rescued together, then they start off trying to keep, they do keep them together. There are, they do have some structures that have like a, sort of like a, a, a smaller sleeping area that is fenced off from the big grassy area. Well, yeah, they have, each one has their own sleeping compartment, but then there's like a concrete area where they can roam up there or a big grass area and they can alternate which animal gets the grass every other day if those animals have reached a point that they are not uh, compatible, but they still have their friend next door, sure. so to speak. And you just don't think about these big cats playing like, like your pets would. Yeah, and uh, at this point, these two, like your domestic pets or children, <laughs> you know, play got a little out of hand, but just as quickly as the spat started, it was over. And um, the interns that were there, calling them by name, but you can see. I mean, this was literally just a minute later. They're friends again. They're friends, they're grooming each other, and um, all's forgiven. I mean, you know, what can you say other than that's a, amazing? <laughs> uh, they, you, it is so much fun to see the feline characteristics go for all sizes. And I think you were going to mention stripes. Okay, and yeah, one of the things that was really interesting to me is that the stripes of a tiger are as unique as fingerprints. And so 
I, the more I've watched the videos that we were, the video that we recorded as I've been putting this together, and you really can kind of see that. I mean, I would always just thought a tiger was striped. And the stripes go, t their skin is striped. It's not just the hair. It's actually their skin is striped as well. And um, the white tigers are, the last time a white tiger was found in the wild was in 1951. And so all white tigers since then have come from that one white tiger. And they tend to have health problems because of all of the inbreeding. And they are all cross-eyed. Is that not yeah. correct? Uh, yes. Okay, now this little guy, <laughs> one of the cool things about staying there is you get to do the Discovery Center. You can come just hang out if you want to. We did not see this little guy up at the fence when we came in that afternoon. But here the next morning, he's gotten pretty brave and is checking us all out. And here off in the distance you can kind of see he and his mama and two siblings are getting ready to go up and probably have something good to eat uh, their enclosures are 12 feet high with a three foot jump deterrent and um here this tiger is just sharpening his claws <laughs> that's encouraging to know <laughs> but it's so cool to be as long as the place is open you can come into the discovery center and of a morning at 8.30, they have or training, 8.45. training sessions. Here, uh, one of the interns is training one of the white tigers. They do not have to go to training. They're not forced to do anything that they don't want to do. But in training, right now, she's differentiating the paws, checking out the paw pads, uh, making sure they're good. And the sitting down and other things are to check mobility and also to check out, just see, are they having, are there any issues, anything different than the last time this, this cat was trained? And um, it was just fascinating that they, you know, they, they are really interested in doing this training because that means Tyson uh, has provided a treat for them. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite parts of the training. Yes. They can check the undercarriage. And you can see how tall that cat yes. really is. I mean, that is just fascinating. But yeah, you can see they can check all the mobility, essentially, of this animal. And uh, there is now a vet service that on, on site that's relatively new. And then this part, uh, what she's getting ready to do here, they do not inoculate the animals unless it's absolutely necessary. I mean, uh, sedate the animals. This is a way they can inoculate them without sedating them, is to have them come and present like this. And so it's all about what's best for the okay. cat. Okay, the habitat tour is this red circle that loops the uh, enclosures for the animals, and you ride that little trolley. You get to see the animals on the back side of the park that you don't see in the discovery area. And one of the main reasons you're going to want to stay at Turpentine Creek is because you can take this tour as many times as you'd like once you've paid to stay. And we did not actually fully understand that until uh, we were in there on Sunday afternoon. And the girl said, oh, if you're staying here, you can take this tour as many times as you want. We said, well, okay, we'll take the three o'clock in the afternoon tour. A secret we learned. The afternoon tour, we wish we'd taken the four o'clock. They feed after the four o'clock tour. This is the three o'clock tour, and you're going to see a lot of animals were out and uh, kind of looking for that food truck. <laughs> but uh, the next morning, the tour we've been scheduled on, which was the nine o'clock tour, the first one in the morning, uh, we saw animals, but they didn't seem to be quite as anxious. And you'll see these these cats are kind of, uh, prowling, that's because it's getting close to yes. feeding time. But, and the order you're seeing these is just kind of the order we saw them. Yes. The uh, probably ligers, uh, any of the, the exotic breeds are not natural. They do not happen with animals in captivity. With animals in the wild, they I mean, only happen. Animals in wild only wild happen in captivity. Just backwards. Okay, and I'm going to give you a challenge as you watch this section of the video, and that is, look for the stripe patterns on the tigers and the tiger hybrids. 
And you're going to start to notice, you know what? Instead of all tigers looking exactly the same, they really are different. And once again, uh, you'll notice how massive some of these are. And that's because they do suffer from gigantism because they are that hybrid. Their daddies were lions and their mamas were tigers. And, um, but, you know, I know you're going to see some of this stuff and think it's redundant. No, when the video clip changes, it's actually a different animal. And that's one of the things we want you to see is how many animals we got to see. And these are just the clips of the animals that actually came up to visit with yes. us, so to speak. And the ones that turned out good in film. Yeah. I mean, uh, on camera, not filming anymore. Well, yeah, we, we still use, we are old. No, just kidding. Mm -hmm. But these animals, this is just uh taking that tour and like i said the secret don't let other anybody else know but those afternoon tours when these cats are ready to eat yeah <laughs> uh and yeah you're you're thankful that you're on something that well i don't know i saw one of the information things said one of these animals can run up to 50 miles an yes. hour so uh that truck pulling all three of these little things i don't it would have taken him a while to reach full <laughs> speed okay this tabby color, there are only a handful of them in the world. And one of them lives here. And you can see this one does suffer from gigantism, has some health issues, but man, what a gorgeous cat. Um, and the this is the afternoon when it's ready for dinner. The next day, I think it may have been laying on its uh, yes. little perch there, but did not move. I mean, it was kind of hard to see exactly uh, where where it was. But this is so cool to be able to, where else are you going to be where you can come out and see this many exotic animals enjoying a refuge? Yes. And for some of these animals, when they got to turpentine, it was the first time they'd ever walked on grass. Yeah, that their paws had ever touched grass. And uh, like we said a little bit earlier, you're going to see in some of these, they have two cats that are just sharing the habitat and they're laying out there together. But some of these, there will be one. You can see the enclosure in the back. Yes. That's where they sleep. But the other one is back behind that uh it's that top fence okay here is a toy in use and they you don't get to regulate the speed of the trolley <laughs> yeah. but uh this cat in just a second is actually going to start rolling it and playing with it and we didn't get to see a lot of that but it's good to see and you don't get the full understanding of how massive these cats are until you're there and this is a i mean these lions are just you know why they're called king of the jungle i mean they are majestic and there is a pure white white tiger on the left uh those are extremely rare and you can see this is a situation where these two were rescued together and are very comfortable just hanging out. Um, and then I don't remember what. They are Seville's, I think. But this is a situation where these were not visible at all in the afternoon, but they were in the morning. Yes. And so hopefully we have convinced you that staying here. And one thing about these animals <laughs> is that they are smaller. And sometimes people think, well, they're bred with a house cat. They should be okay to keep they aren't yeah they mark their territory 40 times a day hopefully by now we have convinced you that staying here is pretty much an amazing opportunity and it, this is purely a non-profit organization so the vast majority of what's spent for lodging or anything else in at the, turpentine the gift shop anything like that goes back to the animals in the way of veterinary care housing any of their needs and um why when we were here our price for one night was with the 15 dollar pet fee it was 80 dollars and that was 15 dollars for each pet even yes. though it's never yeah stuck a paw outside but so 80 dollars if you know us you know we like to camp for free 
but it also costs if you just come for the tours they're 25 dollars a piece for that uh habitat totally tour cool, yeah. and so that's 50 dollars of it for the tours and we took two tours so it's a hundred bucks there we could have yeah we could take that tour as many times as we wanted to so it's an amazing opportunity and an opportunity to give back as well as if you want to support turpentine creek wildlife refuge and you don't you're not able to go to arkansas you might go to amazon smile or smile amazon and choose turpentine creek wildlife refuge as the charity you want part of each purchase price to go to and so having built all this up i want you to listen to the background as we show you your lodging options because our neighbors conversed some during the night it wasn't like it bothered us it was just cool to wake up and it hear. made me <laughs> smile every time i woke up and, and we will tell you when we were in those we call them yurts that are the furthest lodging we still heard them i mean yeah, oh, is, yes you're gonna hear it so now to the lodging mm. options okay lodging you saw on that little map there are a lot of options these are the rv slots and yes they're slots but as you can see it's also a beautiful area you get a water electric picnic table and fire ring and there are six that are right here those are, I forgot what they call them, but they're kind of like yurts. It's on like a pinwheel. Yes. Beautiful scenery. There are actually some mountains out there you can't quite make out here. The tents, and I'll show you better pictures of those in just a second. And then that is the lodge, uh, and this is our next door neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> and all throughout this section, you're going to be hearing the all of our neighbors chat. <laughs> okay, we stayed in one of these before we yes. had an RV. Um, uh, there's a fire pit in the middle. This is in front and back. Each of them has a separate Yeah, you'll see that in just a second. A little sitting area in front, a communal fire pit, a jacuzzi or hot tub. And then we loved sitting out on our deck and just and watching. And those are the tents. And glamping tents. They do have air conditioning. Yes and you, we've never stayed in these if you want more specific information you can contact them and they will give you a lot more information but um these are an option the ones we showed you before were just 18 and older i believe this is the lodge and that cat we showed you is right behind them now when you stay there and you take your dog out for a walk in the evening you're walking right by that Discovery Center, and um, we were out on the other side of the road. I was not up close to these cats, but um, we got a lot of attention. <laughs> um, we weren't quite full, I don't think. And then this animal, I did not see on either tour, no. and yet when I was walking, they you don't go in any gated areas. Staying here, you get to be, you get to be a part of the refuge, not just a visitor. <laughs> And as you've heard some of the uh, vocalizations, you just don't get that during the day. Thanks for watching Two Tired Teachers.